So there was a report that was stating that an increased, you know, hate crimes in this country is linked to a spike of enrollment at HBCUs, according to a Stanford study. Now Stanford is not an HBCU, but yet they are studying our movements. Do you see that? They, they always worried about our movements, where we going to school, where we traveling and what we eating, what we not eating how we dance, how we sing. They, they, they perpetually study the life of black Americans. Trust me on that. They do. This is why I make sure to study them. That's my job to study their movements, to study how they think, how they move. Because if I don't study that, then I can't tell my people anything. If I don't study that, that could be, um, between life or death. You better start studying what, what, what white supremacy do if you're going to live in Babylon. So they were saying that researchers analyze, you know, uh, data, uh, set of institutional enrollment and characteristics in report of hate crimes and census data on the state racial demographics between 1989 to 2017. They found that the standard deviation increase in reports of state level hate crimes predicts a 20% increase in black first time student enrollment at HBCUs. Well, that would make sense. You know, you looked at what happened to George Floyd. You look at what happened to Breonna Taylor and the many, many other, you know, people that we have reported on over the years. We have to understand that we just do not have a, a great relationship with white supremacy and those who believe in white supremacy and want to see it continue going at the expense of black Americans. We have to understand some people in life, you just cannot be around in a long-term basis. Some people you have to socially distance from for the rest of your life. You just got to have to do that. You know, like on the job, there's just some people you just don't get along with. So you, so your only option to deal with them is just on a business basis. So you say, listen, I got to do some work with this person. There's no small talk. It's no nothing asking about your personal business or nothing. Look, let's get this job done and let me go over here away from this person. You know how you got people like that on your job, right? Some people that, that you just do not get along with, but you have to work with them. Well, it's like that with black people historically, we talk about historically and the white supremacists. We, we just do not get along like that. And it's not black folk because black folk, you know, the, you, a lot of black folk want to be loved. They really want to be loved, uh, 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 by the white supremacists. They, they really want validation. A lot of them, you know, even got white Jesus on their wall. You know, some of them, like I said, they, 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 they love, you know, uh, the Democrat party, like a religion. They try to do everything they can to get some validation and love, but even those people will not get it because white supremacy has made that decision where they do not want to get along with black people. So it's not us at all. We didn't start the problem and it's not our job to fix it. You don't need to be telling me, but well, what can I do to fix racism? Well, why don't you just do the complete opposite of what you're doing now? That's a good start. Other than that, I'm not telling you nothing. Why do we always got to tell you what to do? Always got to save you from your problem, right? So when it comes to HBCUs, we have to, you know, start on purpose, sending our children to HBCUs. We have to start doing that. Now I know the PWIs, you know, they, you know, may come with more money. Well, the reason why PWIs come with more money is because more money is being generated there. For instance, we have all these top black athletes that go to PWIs. Well, the reason why they have money for scholarships is because of the enrollment. If our children, you think about this, if you look at every a black player that's out there right now on the collegiate level, football, basketball, um, track, whatever, volleyball, whatever. Imagine taking all those children and putting them all in the HBCUs. Do you know what happened on the collegiate level with, with the defense of the sports? the HBCUs would dominate because all those athletes would be there. But the issue with that is those colleges, you know, don't offer the scholarships as they should. It well, was because of money. You got to have people coming in, but if you truly want a safe space and yes, there's nothing wrong with you having a safe space. You need places where you can go 
where you're not being harassed. You understand? When you go to PWIs, you have race soldiers walking around. At HBCUs, you don't have race soldiers walking around like that. So you don't have to worry about that. You got people that's understand your issues, understand where you come from, understand your plight. So they, they speak your language because they know where you come from. You understand? Why wouldn't you not choose that if you had a choice to do so? Now, a PWI, they give you a full ride scholarship. You know, I can't say nothing about that. But if you're going to pay for something, pay to go to the HBCU at least, at least, at least. You don't have to worry about hate crimes, race soldiers, etc. You know, those of you, you know, who say you want to build things in America and continue to do things here in Babylon, well, you need to build up the institutions that belong, um, you know, and cater to you. You have to do that. Um, if, if one of the presidents of those universities isn't doing right, well, how are you going to correct them if you're not going there to correct them? You understand? I believe that we cannot let those institutions go. Cause what's happening is that immigrants are now, and it's, it's happening all the time. Immigrants are going to the HBCUs. And the thing is that I get upset about some of us here. You want to get mad that immigrants from India. Yeah, they go there. Um, immigrants from different Asian countries, um, you know, brothers and sisters from the continent, wherever else they coming from that's going there. I say, why are you saying something? If you would be enrolled there, then you should be the main one, right? So enroll, you know, encourage your kids. If, if you know, you can make a plan ahead of time. Maybe your child is small and say, listen, you know, you as a parent could tell your child, I'll pay for you to go to school, but you could go to HBCU. I mean, listen, you don't have to go to HBCU, but I'm not paying for it. You're on your own. I mean, listen, white folks tell their kids all the time what they're going to do and what they're not going to do with their money. And you have a right as a parent to tell your grown child, well, listen, I will help you under these conditions. And if you don't like it, well, you don't have to do it. You can just go do your own thing. You understand? So they're studying. They, they, they understand that um, the oppression and uh, micro and macro aggressions that's out there for black people is not good for our psyche. You know, it's not good uh, for overall health. They have established all over the country that racism is also a health issue um, as well. Stress, you know, raise your blood pressure up, give you depression. You know, wh why do we keep involving ourselves in, in places that we don't have to? We need to get in our own areas and go to the HBCUs uh, when it's available. And sometimes you gotta make a sacrifice and just uh, go to another school over, you know, wherever it may be, right? Um, because my thing is I'm not going to keep complaining about something. I'm going to have a solution. And if they're studying that brothers and sisters are going more and more and more, let that trend come, come along, you know, let that trend go. I mean, we have to move in that direction. We talk about higher learning. Why not? I know some people, some of you don't like black people. I know, and that's a legitimate thing with some of you. You just don't like black people and you cannot stand not being around uh, Mazungu mommy and daddy or not having them involved in your mix. You know, some of you may not even value black teachers because you don't like black people, but you believe Mazungu mommy and daddy will teach you more, you know, and you have a sickness, some of you, and you know who you are. But for those of you who don't have that sickness and value black teachers and professors and value, you know, our culture and, and who we are, go because one thing I remember when I went to Bethune Cookman and I interviewed a young lady and she said that she's never had teachers that cared about her as much as she experienced at Bethune Cookman out there in Florida. She said in high school dealing with them folks, they never showed that kind of care for her. But when she got there, she said they showed that. So let's make that, that trend. Let's turn that around and into, and I'm reaching out to any HBCUs out there, reach out reach out because we are one of the platforms that support HBCUs. Um, let's, let's sit down and make a deal, um, to start promoting the HBCUs on this platform because that's what we need to do. But leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about, you know, this particular story, you know, that more and more brothers and sisters are going to the HBCUs due to hate crimes. And I hate to even hear it takes hate crimes to make you start going over there, but let's just go without hate crimes happening.